and welcome to this week's tutorial. We're working on a really special project that a friend of mine requested and I'm pretty excited to see how it turns out. I'm going to be using some boho neutral acrylics for this, but I think it could look really special with a white oak or even sapili. So just mix, you know, get creative and mix up your color schemes however you would like. So we're going to start off by making a, a banner shape back here. And we're going to do that by uh, combining a couple of shapes together. So click on whatever shape is showing up for you here. It might be a line or an ellipse or whatever. Click and hold. And we're going to uh, use the rectangle tool to create a four inch square. Okay, four inch square. It's okay right now that we have a fill. We can take care of it later. I'm going to zoom in just so that we can kind of see things a little bit better. Use the select tool to just kind of move it up uh, to, I don't know, I just like to reduce the, the visual clutter sometimes. Click and hold until your polygon tool uh, shows up. Select your polygon tool and just create a polygon with three sides. I'm not so worried about the radius right now, just the three sides is fine. Okay, and then once you've got your triangle, I am going to come over to this rotate uh, option in the transform panel and select 90 degrees. Okay, now that it's 90, it's been rotated 90 degrees, we can use the width right here, make sure that your proportions are locked, and just change that to two inches wide. Basically, you know, let's say that you decided to make yours a different size, uh, you want your triangle, once it's been rotated, to be half of the width of your square. OK, and you saw that I just kind of moved it into uh -oh. you saw that I just kind of moved it into place here. Uh, you can use these magenta uh, smart guides that pop up to to let you know when things are perfectly well intersected, if you'd like. Um, and if you want to be extra careful, you can select both of these and then use your align panel to horizontal align right. If you don't have that panel object align. OK, uh, and now we're going to do let's see here. We're going to copy and paste this triangle. It's command C, command V on a Mac or control C, control V on a PC or, of course, your edit menu up here and then come up to your transform panel again and flip horizontally. Do the same thing on this side. OK, now, again, if you want to be extra careful that everything's beautifully aligned, you can select just your triangles and align vertical align bottom. Uh, and then if you really, really, really want to be extra sh careful, you can select those triangles again, object group, select everything and horizontal align center. Now, if you're using your smart guides, that isn't actually necessary. It's just an option. Um, all right. At this point, we want to select everything here. And so I'm, again, I'm just clicking and dragging uh, and go ahead to your Pathfinder panel and click to unite. If you don't have that Pathfinder panel, it's under Window, Pathfinder, okay? And it'll pop up with a whole big set of options. All right, so here we have our uh, banner shape. I'm going to go ahead and add, before we get ahead of ourselves here, I'm gonna go ahead and add some tiny little uh, circles here. Let's see. Actually, I do want them to be 0.2 because I know that my macrame rope will fit nicely in that, but I'm actually going to resize this before we go any further. Uh, my final piece is going to be, let's say, um, maybe eight inches wide, actually. Mm -hmm. So I want it to fit on one side of a Glowforge, uh, a piece of Glowforge material. So You'll see that it is eight inches wide. It just fits within the boundaries of that. And in fact, you can, if you want to be extra careful, just make your height 10 inches instead. All right, your Glowforge can accommodate like a 10.9, like almost 11 inches tall, but I always like to make sure that I don't have, um, I, don't, I just don't have to struggle with it when I go to actually create it. OK, so you have a couple of options here. You can just come on up to your fill color and remove the fill. So change that white fill to none fill and do the same with your circle. OK. And in fact, that's probably easiest for most applications. If you want to, okay, let me just go ahead and place my other circle and then we'll address this. Um, if you want it to all be one shape instead of, you know, the banner and two circles, that can be useful for some things. Um, then let me just show you what I would do. I would get my circles perfectly placed. So I'm going to use this vertical align center tool. I'm going to object group it. And then I'm going to select everything and horizontally align center. We grouped these dots or these circles so that it is considered one 
thing versus two separate dots that would all kind of center in the very middle. Okay. I'm just going to scooch this up a little higher. When you're happy with the placement, you can, if you want, instead of this um, banner shape being separate from your holes, if you want it to all be one piece, you can go ahead and select everything, swap the fill and stroke, and use the Pathfinder minus front to subtract those holes. Okay. Swap that fill and stroke back so that you have your shape. Now, this is helpful if you're doing something like selling a banner blank file, which you could absolutely do. You could just make this and post it. And that just makes it easier for people to work with, easier for people to use. If you're just making one sign for yourself or even, you know, you're making the same sign over and over again for your shop, you don't have to bother with that step. It's just an option. OK, so we have our, our banner shape and I'm thrilled with it. I think it's really cute. Now we're going to add the text. So I'm going to do long live in an, uh, like an arched shape and then sisterhood across in a script font. OK, so let me show you um, what we'll do. Let's use the ellipse tool here. And this time let's try maybe a three inch by three inch circle. We can resize it as necessary. I think maybe I forgot that we uh, resized our rectangle. So let's actually bump that up to maybe a five inch circle. OK, the idea is we're going to use this circle as a guide for the text. And so you want it to be smaller than your shape, but fit nicely and all that good stuff. Once you have a circle that you think is probably about right. Yes, we can resize later on. So don't stress too much at this step. Um, use this text tool type tool, but actually you're going to click and hold until the type on a path tool pops up. At this point, click on the path. In this case, your circle. And you see if you zoom in all these little tiny letters going around the side um, where, you know, not messing with that. So let's come on. I think it's Mon. What is it? Montaro. Uh, let's see. Montaro. And I'm going to go with the regular. I do really enjoy the edge one where it's got kind of crinkly edges, but it doesn't make as clean of a cut. So I'm going to do Montaro regular and I'm going to just increase my font size here. Um, let's go ahead actually and write the words. Um, so long live. And then I'm going to just bump up the size of my font until it looks like I want it to look. OK, so here you have a lot of um, little things that you can adjust. All right. You could do a bigger font on a smaller circle like we have here. Right. You could do a smaller uh, font on a bigger circle. Right. You can um, basically you just want to play around with this until you get pretty comfortable with what everything changes when you change it. All right. So let me just kind of show you what I mean here. So we have. Uh, I guess let's just round it up to 100 point. Let's go ahead and hit use our selection tool. When you have your selection tool, you see these weirdo little lines. And that's um, can be pretty intimidating if you're not really sure what you're clicking and, and how it works. OK, so this line right here moves the front of your font. This one back here. Um, oh, let's see here. Uh, can kind of move all of it around. And then let's see here. There's one that if you do it, it only shows part of it. So it's that other weird random line. We're not using that one right now unless for some reason your font is too big and, and, it, and it gets cut off. So just kind of play around with each of these. And in fact, um, this one, if you drag it to the inside of the circle, uh, makes it type along the inside versus the outside, okay? which is not what we want right now, but I've used it a lot for ornaments and things like that. Okay. So I have long live, but look, it doesn't look like it's really nice and um, even. It might be, it might not. So let's go to view, show grid, and then you can use this grid line to see if you're nice and even. Let's zoom in even deeper. You'll see that the bottom of the L is, let's just scooch it until it's touching that, that thicker grid line, but this E is not, okay? Now that might not bother you, but y'all, it does bother me. I would really like this to be as perfectly centered as I can possibly get it. So this is what I'm going to do. I think that this is pretty good. I'm happy with that. And then when you're done, when you like your placement, you like your font size, you like how everything looks, go ahead and click 
your text. You're using your selection tool right now. Click your text. It's going to select this little weird um, circle. Even though the circle looks like it's disappeared, it's actually still there. Uh, and go ahead and right click create outlines. At this point, the circle is gone. There's no, you can't hover over it, nothing's happening. And this is um, text that the Glowforge can read, all right? It's just like creating outlines on a regular piece of font. So if you swap your fill and stroke, you can cut it instead of uh, filling it. Right now, we are going to just leave it as a fill for visualization purposes, and we will change it all um, at the end. So let's go ahead at this point and pop this on to our banner. And we're going to just uh, select everything horizontal align center. Okay. And I like this. Let me see. Do I like it? I think it needs to be a smidge smaller. Um, and then we're going to just center it again, just to be sure. Then we're going to take our type tool. In this case, we don't need type on a path. So click and hold, select your type tool. And I'm going to type, actually, I'm going to type sisterhood but I'm not keeping this font. I think it would actually be super cute with all the same font, but I'm gonna use a different font for this part. I'm gonna use the Wild Things Script Bold. So this is a really lovely little retro script font um, that I just got and I'm pretty obsessed with it. So you're probably going to see it in a couple of more projects in the next little bit. So I hope that you like it too. Um, if not, substitute something that you do like. So you've created uh, your text, go ahead, right click, create your outlines. We're zooming in so you can see all these little letter overlaps that you must take care of by going to your Pathfinder, click to unite, okay? And now your um, banner is pretty nice. You can go ahead and select everything, align, center it. And if you like it, just if you're just planning on engraving, then you're done. And that's wonderful and it's gonna look great. Uh, and I think that this would look really lovely on a piece of um, sapili plywood or even white oak plywood, walnut, one of those, I think that that would look really lovely as an engraved sign. But as I mentioned, that's not what I'm doing. Uh, I'm using a sort of a blush boho neutral background and then I'm going to do the letters in um, like an ivory or maybe a white acrylic. Now. If I had some white core boho neutral um, acrylic, that would be even better. And I would absolutely just engrave this. But y'all, I am not about painting and engrave. This is just not something I can be near that. It's not, I just can't do it. So there are beautiful, there are people out there who do a beautiful job at it. I'm not that person. So what I'm going to do instead is a little bit more work intensive, but I think it's going to have a nice effect. So I'm going to just copy and paste these um, text bits over here. And we're going to go ahead and just reverse the fill and stroke because I want these to be cut. I don't want them to be engraved. And I'm actually, since um, when I cut acrylic, I noticed that the, the, the part that the laser burns away is a little bit more than when I'm cutting plywood. I don't know if you find the same thing, but I do. So I, especially on projects where I'm doing letters out of acrylic, it's really important to me to add a small offset. So object, path, offset, path, not that big. Let's do like a 0 0.02. Okay, so I'm just adding a, a little bit. And actually, I don't want it to be round. Let's try a miter because I want to keep those sharp corners on my end. I'm going to just change it back so you can pay attention to those sharp corners and see the difference between these options. OK, so you pick what you want, but I like those sharp corners and I'm keeping it. All right. Um, so right now you have your original cut lines plus your offset cut lines. So I want you to select it again and then go to Pathfinder Unite. Yes, there are other ways we can get rid of that. Yes, you're welcome to do that instead if you want. This is the technique I'm showing you this time. And on this one, it's already pretty thick. I'm just gonna do a small, I'm gonna let's, let's just take a look together. Um, yeah, no, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna do a 0.02 miter uh, offset here. Uh, click off of it, click back on, so it's selecting both, and Pathfinder Unite, okay? So it looks perhaps a little heftier than you might think looks nice, like it looks a little thicker than, like I don't want my font to look like that when I cut it out. The letters, I actually kind of like it that thick too, but um, 
but remember, the reason that we thickened this particular font is just because the on acrylic, the, the, the laser does burn away a little bit more. Now, why did we copy paste instead of just moving it over? Well, because here we're going to put some scored placement lines on our acrylic backing so that we're not trying to eyeball a perfect arch. Like, I don't know about you, but I'm terrible at that. So um, let's go ahead and select both of these. So the, the long, uh-oh. Don't move it off of center. That would not be helpful. So select, um, I'm holding down shift to select both of these, but you can click and drag if you'd like. Come to object path, offset path. Now this time, instead of a positive number over here, we had a 0.02 before. We're gonna do a negative 0.04. And the reason we did a negative is because we want it to be within the letters instead of outside of the letters. It's really important that you add this negative offset because if you do not, then your scored placement lines will show once you glue your letters down and that is not the look we want. It doesn't look professional. So we're gonna do that negative 0.04 inch and just, uh, I am hitting okay, um, but you can just zoom in and make sure that you can still see it. You still want those lines to be there, all right? Um, if for whatever reason, maybe you did a smaller design than mine and yours are not showing up, do a negative 0.02 or a negative, whatever, play around with it. Now, before I click off of this, while just the, the offset, the, the, that negative 0.04 or whatever, the smaller one uh, is selected and not the original, I'm going to go ahead and change this to the color I usually use for scores, which is that weird green color. I, I don't know why I said it weird. It's fine. And then swap the fill and stroke um, because I want it to be scored, not engraved. And then I'm going to copy it, okay? So you can use the Command C if you want, or I'm just gonna go Edit, Copy, and I'm going to delete it. Then I'm going to select this and delete it, select this and delete it, and yes, it hurts my heart every single time that I have to do that. And then go to Edit and use Edit, it's very important you do this one, Edit, Paste in Place. That, ed that pastes it exactly where it was before. If you just paste it and don't paste in place, it'll show up wherever, and then you, you have just kind of wasted, uh, wasted your time there. All right, so now I have a banner with two cut holes. I have the scored placement lines right back here that are in, I call it inset. I don't think that's really the word, but it's got a negative offset um, so that it won't show once I glue down these thicker letters over top. Now, I'm just going to leave this all as part of one document because I'm making this sign one time. I'm not making it a million times. I don't need to, to kind of... Um, you know, worry about my workflow. But if you are planning on manufacturing whatever sign that you design, then you'll want to perhaps um, move your letters onto uh, a separate document. And that way it's easy to, to, to kind of cut it from one material and cut this from a different material. Um, but for me, I'm happy to just upload it to the Glowforge interface and delete the parts I don't want or set it to ignore or what have you. All right, so if you make a long live sisterhood or a long live brotherhood or a long live adventure or whatever kind of beautiful sign that you decide to make, I would love if you would tag me um, on Instagram at the Fable Tree. I would love to see your designs. Um, also, if you want to take a deeper dive into file design and learn all about how to design files, uh, starting with files much simpler than these and working our way up to files much more complex than this one, then check out FileMakers Academy. I put the link in the description and would love to see you there. All right. Until next week.